Hi everyone, this is Justin. Welcome to Island Boy on Anchor FM. Got a call from Phoenix, Arizona. When I was starting out this uh, public journal, I really wanted to write about homesickness. That's really where I was at the time, and I still am in a lot of ways. Originally, the story was born out of a news article that I'd read several weeks ago about some people that were vandalizing cars that had out-of-province or out-of-country plates. And there's currently an Atlantic bubble restriction placed on New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island, preventing people from traveling from outside these areas. And it's uh, in the interest of protecting protecting people really uh now what's ironic is these restrictions are in place to protect people yet once they're there some people take it upon themselves to take matters into their own hands so it began as a response to that situation but as i reflected more and more i realized that uh, i had a lot more feelings when it came to being homesick so this piece is called you can't go home What is the cure for homesickness? Well, as the name might suggest, the cure is going home. It's not exactly rocket science. It's in the name, after all. If only other modern ailments were that convenient. Historically, combating the feelings of missing home have been fairly remediable. This past year, that all changed. COVID-19 burst onto the scene. While many brilliant scientists are still hard at work experimenting, a vaccine for the virus has not yet been discovered. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as homesickness, an ailment whose discoverer had the forethought of including the cure in its name. God help the beer industry if the same can be said for coronavirus. How does the very real, very threatening, how does the very real, very threatening COVID-19 virus measure up against homesickness? Well, it doesn't. When comparing the validity of two ailments, one can look as far as any medical journal to understand that one is a potentially fatal virus, the other is born only out of feeling. Unfortunately, even when measured against other far more factual ailments, that doesn't make said feeling any less painful. I won't be the person who cures coronavirus, but I hope I can be the one to cure homesickness, at the very least for myself. I'm originally from Cardigan, Prince Edward Island, and I've been away on again, off again for about six years. When I leave, my heart aches for the comfort of the red sand, the soul pines for the brackley waves, and the gut grumbles for Richard's lobster rolls. Every time I leave, I always have a sense of when I'll be back. As the plane leaves the Charlottetown airport, I itemize and prioritize the things I want to do as soon as I return. One hug my family at the airport. Two, take a sentimental drive around with the family before reaching home. Three, have dinner at a locally owned restaurant. Four, catch up with friends over a drink at a pub. Five, go to bed and rest without thinking of when I have to leave again. In reality, the execution of said list looks a lot more like this. One, text my friend where they parked at the airport. Two, Wait for said friend to get to the airport after they were, quote, stuck in traffic. Three, get dinner at the McEsso near Stratford. Four, realize that I am out of shape and feel exhausted, possibly from the McDonald's. Boy, it's late, isn't it? Is it, uh, what time is it? 8 p.m. Huh. Five, go to bed and rest without thinking of when I have to leave again. This, historically, has been my remedy for combating homesickness. And now the question has changed. What is the cure for homesickness when you cannot go home? The answer, you accept the fact that you can't go home because it's better to be homesick than to not have a home to be sick for. How's that for a tough pill to swallow? It's like Buckley's. It tastes awful and it works. Why can't I go home? Current travel restrictions only permit those residing within Atlantic Canada to travel to and from PEI. That means those foolish enough to have aspirations to work in the arts away from home and not thinking ahead to buy a summer home in Stanhope are left outside of the bubble. In short, I can't go home. 
And if I want a decent night's rest, that's a fact I have to accept. Don't get me wrong, I've tried many, many other remedies. I tried being jealous of those who can go home. This led to me being angry, resentful, and frustrated at them for getting to go to my home when I can't. But the more jealous or resentful I feel, the more I miss home. And then I'm back to where I started. I hold no ill will to those who can go where I cannot. I've also tried deluding myself that maybe someday, somehow, all of this will just go away and things will go back to normal and I can stop hearing about all this new normal stuff that I keep hearing about on the news. But once again, the more energy I invest into chasing thoughts about what may or may not come for a very long time, the more it exhausts the heart. Finally, I tried sitting down, slowing down, letting my heart break one piece at a time. This generally is the last step because hearts don't like to be broken and they will protect themselves at all costs. In that moment, it's not until you can look at the fragments of your broken self and see the pieces of who you are. Part of seeing who you are is discovering what truly matters to you. I learned about homesickness. I learned that my homesickness isn't because of the island itself. As much as I want to fantasize about the dirt, the waves, or the delicious sea bug sandwiches, the true heart behind home lives in the people. Right now, what matters most is the health and well-being of the people. If that means not being there for a little while, so be it. It's time to face the truth. The truth is I'm afraid. I'm afraid that my mom might get sick from burning herself out going to work every day, supporting senior citizens in need. I'm afraid that she spends most of her waking hours putting others' needs before her own and was already caught in the recent virus scare. I am afraid because even after the moment she was told she was virus-free, she will get back on the horse and ride back to the place that nearly knocked her down. I'm afraid for my friends who lost their jobs this summer and are feeling the grind of hard times. I'm afraid because PEI isn't exactly crawling with job prospects, especially for those in the arts. I'm afraid because the hard times attack more than just the bank account. They aim directly at the heart. I'm afraid for their hearts breaking too. I'm afraid of the citizens who live in fear of the specter of the virus and key cars and threaten those with out of province plates. I'm afraid that if they are worried, they will lose sight of the proper steps to seek safety for themselves and those around them by taking matters into their own hands. I'm afraid of the hands that write, get the f back to the mainland on a note and leave it on a car. I'm afraid that people think they can engage in fisticuffs and still abide social distancing regulations. I'm afraid for the 100,000 worried hearts that are adjusting to the population increasing as travel restrictions loosen. I will say it again. I'm afraid of those who key Dodge caravans with Nova Scotian plates. Seriously, no need for that. If they own a Dodge caravan, they have enough troubles. Admitting that I'm afraid has been the toughest pill to swallow, but it's quite possibly the only thing that will see me through these feelings of missing my home when I know I can't be there. This is not a medical journal. Hell, this is barely even a journal. If there's anything to glean from this admission, it's that acknowledging hurt is the first step towards healing. In times where the spotlight is on identifying the virus, matters of the heart still matter as well. As much as I don't want to feel homesick, I am grateful to have a home to be sick for. I'll see you again soon. Until then, my heart is with you. Every last piece. I heard a voice to help me understand it. One moment on the shoulder of the road. Once again, that was You Can't Go Home. And that was originally published on July the 9th. And that was in response to 
the Atlantic bubble regulations being put into place for the Atlantic provinces in Canada, including Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. Some adjustments have been made, obviously, to some travel restrictions since then, but this really spoke to where I was at at the time. Thank you for everyone who listened to this uh, this broadcast once again. Once again, my name is Justin Shaw. This has been Island Boy on Anchor FM. Thank you to Eddie Quinn and Fiddler Sons for sharing their music with this broadcast. Take care.